In the last three videos, we've been looking at solving quadratic equations. Generally speaking, if we want to solve a quadratic equation, we put it in the form ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero. We can solve this by using the quadratic equation. We can say x is equal to minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. In this video, we're going to look at something called the discriminant. The discriminant now is b squared minus 4ac. This determines the nature of the roots of a quadratic equation. We have three different scenarios. We have no real roots, we have repeated roots, or we have distinct real roots. So we have no real roots, we have repeated or equal roots, and we have two distinct real roots. The first scenario we're going to look at is when b squared minus 4ac is less than zero. When you've looked at solving quadratic equations in the past, sometimes you've come up with a math error when you've put this into your calculator. The reason that is, is because this value is a negative number and we can't take the square root of a negative number and get a real value. So if we look now, b squared minus 4ac less than zero, we say that this has no real roots. If we look at this graphically, what we're going to have is one of the two situations that I'm about to draw. So I'm going to put up some graph axis. If the value of a is greater than zero, so it's a positive quadratic, we're going to have something that looks like this. It's not going to pass now the x-axis. There's no solutions. So when this is set to zero, we've got no intersection with the x-axis. So this is a positive quadratic equation. The other scenario is if we have a less than zero and we're opening up downwards, we've got now a less than zero, this will now not pass the x-axis. So this is the first scenario. b squared minus 4ac is going to be strictly less than zero, gives us no real roots. Let's go ahead and look at this graphically. So here's our quadratic equation, and we could choose anything. Let's go ahead and look at this. We got, in this particular case from last time, 3x squared plus 4x plus 2. So let's write this in. We've got now, and I'll write it just below, we've got 3x squared plus 4x plus 2, and we want to set this equal to 0 now and show that it's got no real roots. So 3x squared plus 4x plus 2, we can see it's got no real roots as it's not crossing the x-axis. If I drop the value of c, we can see we're going to get two real roots if I do that. But if I take it back up to 2, there are going to be no real roots. So what we're going to do now is evaluate the discriminant. The value of a is 3. This is in the form ax squared plus bx plus c. The value of b is going to be 4. The value of c is going to be 2. So we're doing b squared minus 4ac. So b squared, that's 4 squared minus 4 lots of 3 multiplied by 2. So we're going to have now 16 minus 24. That's going to give me minus 8. That is less than 0. Therefore, there are no real roots. So we can say, therefore, no real roots. So no real roots as b squared, so as b squared minus 4ac is less than zero. So that's an, uh, an example where we've got now an, a positive x squared term. We could have a look at one when we had a negative x squared term. Let's go ahead and look at that. So if we just flip this over and then just reduce the value of c, we can see if I did this, let's go ahead, let's put this out to uh, minus two, there we go. Is it going to stop? There we go. So if now I drop this down to minus 3 and we evaluated the discriminant, we're going to now get a number less than 0. And we can see there are no real roots. We can get real roots if I just lift that up like so and just move it past the x-axis. So this is the first scenario. b squared minus 4ac is less than 0, therefore no real roots. If we look at the next scenario, and that is b squared minus 4ac is equal to 0. In this case, we have what we call repeated roots. So writing this down, repeated or equal roots. And I'll just scribble this, equal roots. So let's have a look at an example of this. 
Let's now take, and I'll draw a quick sketch here, what we're going to have is the following. We've got our coordinate axis. This is going to touch, and you'll see later on in your studies, this is actually quite important. So if I do something like this, we'll just go there, we'll come back up like so. So we've got a repeated route. So when you've solved, and that's if A, let's just put this on, if A is greater than zero, and then this one right here, if A is less than zero. We're going to get now one point of touching. And you'll see over time that this is really quite handy now. So A is going to be less than zero. So let's now take what I would call, or what would generally be called, a perfect square. So if we think about a perfect square, an example of a perfect square might be x minus 2 all squared. So this now would be equal to zero. So we'd have x squared minus 4x plus 4 is equal to zero. So this point right here in this particular case, this value would be 2. And we can see that there's only one repeated solution to that. Now if we evaluate the discriminant here, the value of A is going to be 1. The value of B is going to be equal to minus 4. And the value of C is going to be positive 4. B squared will give us minus 4, which we need to square. Minus 4 times by A times by C. And that's going to give us now 16 minus 16, which is 0. We could do exactly the same if we had, for example, x squared minus 10x plus 25 is equal to 0. This factor is to give us x minus 5 all squared is equal to 0. We can see that a is going to be equal to 1, b is going to be equal to minus 10, and c is going to be equal to positive 25. So evaluating the discriminant, we've got b squared, which is minus 10 squared minus 5. 4, and then we've got A, which is 1, and then C, which is 25. So 100 minus 4 lots of 25 is 0. Therefore, we have now a repeated or equal root. That is the second scenario. And if we look at that now, let's go ahead and just set this up. Let's say we've got now x squared. So we've got 1 on the coefficient of the x squared term. Let's just get that there. And then we've got now... On here we have got minus, let's do minus, what is it, minus 4x. So minus, uh, let's grab, there we go, minus 4x. And then we had plus 4. So this is what it looked like. Let's just get that in place. So we got a repeated root. And you'll see as in terms of things like tangents to circles, this can be really quite helpful uh, in late in our studies. So that's the second scenario. Let's now look at the third scenario. If we have b squared minus 4ac, and this is going to be greater than zero, then we have now two distinct real roots. So two distinct real roots. So what does this look like graphically? Well, this is the one that we've been very used to seeing, and these are the ones that we can solve, and they're fairly straightforward. So let's have a look at an example now. We could have something that looked like this. So now the value of a, so a is going to be greater than zero in that case. We're going to have a less than zero in this case. So we can see that we've got these two distinct real roots. On this one, we had one repeated root or equal roots. This time we've got two real roots. So let's look at a quadratic that we've seen time and time again. x squared minus 2x minus 8 is equal to zero. So our value of a is going to be 1, our value of b is going to be minus 2, and our value of c is going to be minus 8. We already know that this factors and we can solve it. But let's look at the discriminant. b squared minus 4ac. So minus 2, we're going to square that, minus 4 times by a times now by c. So I'm going to end up with 4 plus 32, which is going to give me 36. And that now is quite clearly greater than zero. Therefore, we have two distinct real roots. And we know that we can factor this to x minus 4 and then x plus 2 and go ahead and solve and say that x is going to be 4 or x is going to be minus 2. So that's the use of the discriminant. Three different scenarios. b squared minus 4ac is less than zero, no real roots, equal to zero, repeated or equal roots. So just think on that case of that being a perfect square. And then this one, we've got now two distinct real roots. Okay, let's work